Morning, Mr. Mayor. How are you? So, this is in regard to the governor's uh, slamming of your handling of the migrant crisis. She said you were too slow to respond and refused to and refused the state suggested sites uh, that were suggested. Uh, do you think your response was too slow? Well, uh, the uh, first of all, I don't think the governor slammed uh, us. I think the governor did her analysis on probably four areas. Uh, that uh, real, I think, they need, just need clarity on, and particularly those sites. We analyzed each site. We actually went to 3,000 different sites to see where we could house uh, migrants. The sites that were given to us, some of them were in floodplains, some of them were not suitable to build, and so we analyzed each, uh, each site. We did not ignore any of the sites as part of our 3,000 sites that we looked at. Uh, to house over 100,000 people. And so we're going to go through the list with the governor's team and show her and her team why the sites they gave us were not suitable to housing migrants. Because the worst thing you could do is house migrants in a floodplain area, and all of a sudden uh, you have a, a emergency where you have to move people at that location. But we're going to go through the list with her and show why we could not build or we could not have used those areas as, uh, as for asylum seekers. And then there was an analysis of the invoicing. Many people don't understand. We're not getting dollar for dollar for every invoice we give the, the state. We're getting 29% per dollar. So the entire billion dollars that, were out, that was allocated, we won't get that until we spend over $4 billion. We haven't spent over $4 billion. We spent something like $1.7 billion. So the t every time we give an invoice, they do look at the invoice and give us 29% of that. So there was no way we can draw down on a whole billion dollars because we haven't spent over $4 billion yet. And so when you look at the points that the governor raised, we want to sit down with her team and give them a real accounting so we can continue the partnership that we've done. Uh, listen, we've been working great together, and we're going to continue to do that. And her analysis is important, uh, but we know we have a clear explanation for each one of those points that were raised. I'm happy to see the state is engaged. This is a national crisis. Uh, this administration has done an awesome job like no other of uh, municipality has been able to accomplish over 101,000 people, no child, no family, sleeping on the streets, and we're going to continue to do what we're doing. Hi, yes. Uh, I had a question about right to shelter. Uh, Governor Hochul said she doesn't think that right applies statewide. We wrote about how Attorney General Tish Dave disagrees with that. What is your position, and do you think the governor and local leaders elsewhere in the state have the same obligations to shelter people that you do in your state? Well, uh, the courts are going to determine that. Uh, legal aid has taken action. Uh, our corporation counsel is in court uh, with legal aid, uh, the state, uh, and the city, and they're going to make that determination. Of, and I believe the obligation of dealing with the humanitarian crisis of disproportion, something we've never witnessed before in the history of this city, uh, I think it's, uh, it's up to the courts to make the final determination. And I was looking over the, uh, the history of uh, immigration and migration to our city, and uh, 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 back during the time, there was one year when we had 1.3 million people that came through, um, our, through Ellis Island, and we were able to absorb all of them, those 1.3 million. The reason we were able to absorb them is because each one that came through had the right to work. The reason we're having a challenge right now with 101,000 people because we're telling them they don't have the right to work. And I don't know if we really understand the magnitude of telling this large population of people you do not have the authorization to work. That is just so anti-American. We all should be outraged by not allowing human beings to be able to take care of themselves, what they're asking for. And so I think this is a national and statewide issue that has been unjustly dropped into the lap of New York City residents. We only make up 0.05 of the land mass in New York State, 0.05. That's what we make up. Yet, we are housing over 99% of the migrants. 
That's just unfair to New York City. Um, morning, Mr. Mayor. Just to go back to the previous question, um, in the court filings this week from the state, they were uh, specifically described as a decision about the city to allow my I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing the nice sounds of jackhammers. That means we're building. <laughs> I think I, I heard you. And first, I want to do a correction. Thanks to like Charles. We have to spend $3.4 billion to, to draw down on the $1 billion that the, that the governor uh, and, the, and the state lawmakers uh, put in place. What people don't understand, part, part of uh, people did an analysis of, well, you had beds that were vacant. Would they not, that's a little dishonest in what people looked at. Laws require us to have a certain number of beds open for a particular population of domestic violence and others. You know, we have to have a certain level of beds that are open in our homeless system. So when people stated, well, you should have just filled those beds up and just ignore what the requirements are, that was wrong. So any given time, our uh, a homeless system, there's a number of beds that we have to leave open in case of emergencies, and that's what uh, the commissioner uh, is, was attempted to share, and the information is right there. So we're not going to violate the law. We're going to follow the law. I'm very clear on that. And there was never a desire to have anyone sleep outside. The dam burst. <laughs> I don't know how to get it clear. We you know for for a, a year and eight months, no one was sleeping on our streets. I stood up at this podium day after day stating that eventually the dam is going to burst. We had 101,000 people coming in our city, over, averaging anywhere from 2,400 to 2,900 a week, 10,000 a month. We didn't think the dam was going to burst eventually. And so when people do an analysis and say uh, for two days people slept outside um, the Roosevelt, I'm asking them to go to other cities. In other cities, people are sleeping in police stations. People are sleeping on the streets, around churches. Children are sleeping outside. We were able to accomplish what no other municipality was able to accomplish, process and handle over 100,000 people. And I just think it is uh, it's wrong and it's an attack on those uh, city employees who dedicated their lives um, doing countless number of hours and to say that, well, people slept out two days, did y'all intentionally do it? That's just insulting to these hardworking New Yorkers. And that is not what we did. The dam burst. And when dams burst, the water flow. And the water is, in this case, were human beings that had to sleep outside the Roosevelt Hotel. Yes. First question, did you do so? And also, why was it? Did I, I'm sorry, did I do? Did you remove TikTok from your electronic devices you ordered the city employees to remove TikTok? And, uh, and why was this important? Well, the, um, the mandate came down from our, uh, from, through, from me through uh, our uh, uh, chief technology officer. Uh, and that includes me. I'm not above the rules and regulations. Uh, that all city-owned devices uh, cannot use TikTok. Uh, we are in the process of meeting with the TikTok executives uh, to engage in a conversation. Uh, the conversation. It was a cybersecurity risk for us. And, you know, we, although we have been free from, for the most part, of getting cybersecurity attacks, uh, it is a constant threat. It's a constant threat, and much of that threat is coming um, from outside the country of trying to infiltrate, infiltrate our systems and really impact our data. And we need to protect New Yorkers' data, and we, the cybersecurity leader, uh, uh, Matt Frazier, stated that this is an issue we must resolve. The federal government uh, made a move. We're complying with that. We're hoping TikTok 
uh, can find a way just to really secure and safeguard uh, the users. And right now, we didn't feel comfortable in doing that. And I, I trust my uh, chief technology officer. This was the, this was the recommendation he made. Is going to act. I, I'm, I'm hoping so because it's, it's really a tying up a lot of time that we're going into individual court cases where uh, everyone is finding creative ways to not be the state and country that we are and stating that, you know, no matter where we send uh, the migrant and asylum seekers, and, you know, we were picking up the cause. You know, you're picking up the cost to do so. And to constantly go to court and find creative ways in local municipalities to say that they're not going to take uh, migrants, uh, I, I think is unfortunate. And we're hoping that the governor will put in place an executive order that will prevent us from having to go from location to location to location. New York just cannot continue to take this flow. And you know, I, I, all I can say is I'm hoping people can imagine what it's like to every uh, week come up with housing, you know, from 25 to almost 3,000 people, finding new places, uh, sporting fields, recreational centers, hotels. Uh, that is just not how you manage a city, and that's not how you're able to move this forward. Now, we've been able to get over 2,200 people through uh, the asylum process, which each individual is take about four hours. We built out an amazing system with pro bono attorneys. Our, our corporations and law firms have joined us. I cannot thank them enough. Uh, but the flow is not sustainable. And so we're hoping that that executive order uh, takes place that can stop what we're seeing in some of our municipalities in the northern part of, of, of the state. Let me get this last question. Uh, yes, my question. You mentioned um, migrants going to other localities. In that same letter, the governor mentioned that there aren't that many, many eligible households, and the ones that you've presented to them haven't been that many. Is it that you think that when you are talking to these migrants, your team is not doing a good job of letting them understand what the resettlement program looks like, that they'll still get the same services that they get here in the city, that there is transportation? Do you think there's an issue with the communication when your team is talking to migrants about going to other you, now, when you said that, that um, there's not enough eligible households that want to leave to go? Right. Oh, okay. Well, no, I think the communication is clear. Uh, people just, you know, are reluctant to leave New York City. And uh, that's part of the challenge, you know. People believed, and when I, when I speak with some of the migrants in their home countries, uh, they are told, you know, that this is the city uh, to be in, and then we have those at the border, particularly the Custom Border Patrol, are sending people here, and so it's a combination. We're doing an amazing job. Uh, remember, uh, over 101,000 came in to the city. 57,000 are still in our care. So if you do the math, you see 43,000, a little over 43,000, we were able to show other ways, going to other municipalities, um, finding family and loved ones. So we've done a job, and that's what must be, uh, must be really acknowledged here. 101,000 came in, 57,000 remaining, over 43,000 we've been able to help transition somewhere in the fabric of the country or in, this, in the city, 43,000. So we're doing that job, but here's the problem. As soon as we have the 43,000 that are transitioning out, we're getting another 10,000 a month coming in. So we'll never catch up. <laughs> you know, so if we were only dealing with 101,000 and then we had to handle 101,000, we already got 43,000 out, we could work on the other 57,000, then you can say, okay, we'll reach a point where we, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because we have the constant flow that's coming in. No one is helping us on the bordering states. We're not getting the answers we need from the federal government. And we're constantly playing catch up on those who are coming in. And a large number of them are children with families. So you could treat single adults 
differently than children and families. We've been very clear, we can't have children and families sleeping on the streets, and we have to make sure the children are absorbed into our educational system. We're seeing a larger number of children and families that are coming in, and this is, this is one of the major crises that we're facing in this problem. Okay, thank you.